Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, or should I say good morning or good evening, depending where you are. But uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Conversations with Dune and Friends. Uh, I am Dune Nguyen. I'm your host today, and uh, we are um, in for a, uh, a treat. We have a special guest joining us today. Uh, it's Lara Tang. So, so Lara Tang is a uh, singer and songwriter. Uh, born and raised in Winnipeg, uh, that would be Winnipeg, Manitoba, for those of us who are outside of uh, Canada, and uh, uh, currently residing in Edmonton, and uh, music has always been a part of her family household, and uh, she grew up studying piano and uh, you know, singing in church and uh, school choirs, and eventually uh, picking up the guitar and dabbling in with other instruments such as drums and electronic bass. Lara attended the uh, Canadian Mennonite uh, University in Winnipeg for two years, studying classical voice, uh, but eventually found it more interesting uh, in the kind of more interest in the uh, pro audio and recording industry. Uh, she then moved to Edmonton with her family and uh, attended uh, Grant McEwen University and, and received a diploma in recording arts. She wrote, produced, and self-released her uh, debut EP called The Experience Collection, which can be found on uh, many of the major streaming platforms, an uh, electro-pop style musical collection of thoughts and experiences uh, in life, um, not limited to anxiety, and uh, life of a woman who uh, works in the pro audio industry and dealing with uh, uh, grief as well. Uh, so, so Lara is currently fronting for a new pop punk band called uh, Teacup Romance that is currently uh, has an EP in the works and uh, with local shows to come. So uh, with that brief introduction, uh, I would like you to uh, join me in welcoming our uh, guest, Lara Tang. Lara, welcome to the show. Hi, how's it going? Good, good. How are you today, good. my friend? I'm doing good. Yeah, it's nice to see the sun finally uh, came yeah. up for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I uh, just wanted to confirm with our viewers here. Uh, make sure that they can hear us. And uh, so, uh, so Lara, you can uh, go on to the public tab if you haven't already. That way we can see mm -hmm. and uh, kind of hear from the audience that way. And for our viewers out there, if you have um, questions or comments for Lara, uh, please feel free to uh, um, add your comments and we'll be able to see it and, and Lara would be able to uh, respond to them live. So the more interaction from the audience, the better. So so welcome and uh, uh, wonderful. We have uh, Bradley uh, uh, said yes here. She, he can, uh, he can, I assume Bradley is a friend of yours? Uh, he's my brother-in-law actually. Wonderful. There you go. Can you yeah. see that on the screen when I feature it? You can see mm -hmm. his photo. Wonderful. So thank you so much, Bradley, for confirming. Hopefully my voice is relatively the same kind of uh, level as uh, Lara's voice. But uh, so Lara, tell us um, a bit more about your background before we get into the conversation today. Uh, tell us more. Uh, you, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, you know, music has always been a part of my life. It's always been, you know, a part of my uh, household. Uh, you know, grew up in church and, you know, my parents, they were heavily involved. Um, and, uh, you know, but I, I have this funny thing where like when I was younger, um, my parents, they would kind of do a uh, duet kind of thing. My dad, he plays uh, a lot of classical guitar. And so he, he would play classical guitar and my mom would sing. And uh, I, I don't know why, like I, they sung it in Vietnamese. So at that time when I was very young, I did not understand anything that they were saying but like I would just be moved to tears every single time uh they sang in church and it was just so beautiful and so uh yeah definitely uh music was very encouraged in my household uh me and my older sister Rosalind uh they they put us in piano lessons from a young age probably I think we started at about you know like grade one so I was maybe about like five years old um yeah and sang in church choirs and you know it's always been uh, a part of my life um and then you know uh went on to you know being a part of uh, a lot of uh, school choirs chamber choirs and vocal jazz groups in in high school and you know uh, eventually you know decided you know maybe i want to uh, take music a little bit seriously and you know, and uh, so i decided to uh, go into the music program at uh, canadian mennonite university cmu and uh, yeah i did classical voice for about two years and uh, you know as much as uh, you know uh, 
uh, how how great it is. That I just found at the time, you know, it just wasn't really my thing anymore. You know, I you know singing chamber choirs and stuff was like it was really great, but you know, just being a solo classical musician, you know, not not to knock uh, classical musicians at all because you know that sort of uh, caliber of uh, technique is is so great, but it just wasn't for me at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just remember at uh, CMU they had you know an introductory course to recording, and I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, this seems kind of cool, you know. So you know maybe maybe I'll take it and and see how it goes. And uh, yeah, I absolutely loved it. I loved the process. I loved you know uh, being able to to record the the right take, you know, with the the right equipment and be able to capture that performance and uh yeah so you know after my second year at cmu i decided you know hey why not uh you know delve into this more and uh, my my family they were moving to edmonton at the time anyways and so and uh grant McEwen, they had a really good music program they had a recording program there as well and so I was like okay well, i might as well you know uh, move out out here to edmonton with my family and uh do some recording and uh yeah did the did the two-year diploma um, and, uh, yeah, right after that worked at, I've been working at Long and McQuaid ever since it's been about seven years now, yeah, uh, yeah. that I started at Long and McQuaid working in, uh, pro audio and recording. And it's actually just been, uh, this yeah. past March that I've, uh, that I've gotten to be an assistant manager at, uh, at the White Avenue store. So it's, it's been, it's been really good. And, you know, uh, been really nice to do, uh, music on the side as well. Been, uh, involved in a lot more projects than, than I realized. It's funny. I was going through uh all a bunch of videos and stuff to to bring to this interview and uh uh i've been involved in a lot that i give myself credit for (laughs) yeah yeah well you know it's uh it's uh always great to kind of pause and take stock of uh, where you've been and look in the rearview mirror a little bit and uh Mm -hmm. i i'm quite impressed and and happy that you were able to get the classical training early on because many of us uh who, who don't have that classical training come at music from a different direction. And, and at mm-hmm. times we really wish that we have some of the classical kind of training early on. Uh, I did take bands, but the, you know, bands is very much different than uh, obviously a, a McCune university thing, which is very highly respected throughout uh, anybody who knows about the McCune uh, programs in music, which is just highly mm-hmm. respected. Right. Yeah, definitely. Like going to music school, uh, like taking lessons, it's definitely, uh, taught me a lot of, you know, techniques and, you know, how to uh, work with other musicians. It's really good that uh, uh, McEwen kind of brought that to the table, you know, because like at CNU, um, when I was doing the classical voice thing, it was basically um, just all about you. Uh, you. You only really learn how to work with other musicians if, you know, you were in uh, one of the choirs mm-hmm. and stuff. But at Grant McEwen, uh, it was a requirement to, to work with other band members. So I was I was really appreciative of that. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was teaching at the uh, city center campus, uh, McEwen, I, during lunch, sometimes I would see the music uh, students uh, doing their performances out in the near the cafeteria oh, yeah. there, right? Uh, you yeah. probably have that, yeah. that experience as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, when I when I went to Grant McEwen, I was still in the uh, the old Jasper Place building, so the big uh, orange building. And so, uh, mm. I would, yeah, so most of the, the schooling and performances I did there, um, it, I guess I, I never really performed at the city center campus. You yeah. know, there there was only uh, one time where uh, they had a battle of the bands and uh, yeah. Yeah. me and a group of girls uh, at the school at the time, we were like, hey, this sounds fun. Uh, why not, you know, get into it? And, you know, we, we learned a few songs. I think it was maybe about uh, two weeks that we had or mm-hmm. two or three weeks or, or months that uh, we had to prepare. And uh, surprisingly, we end up, ended up winning the competition, which is nice. really great. But uh, unfortunately, that band uh, uh, is not together anymore. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we've all gone our separate uh, separate ways. But, like, you know, it's really good to see, uh, you know, everyone else uh, really thriving in their element uh, in regards to music. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, uh, tell us, uh, when, when did you start your music program and when you finished at, at McEwen? Uh, I just want to kind of understand the time frame there. Uh, yeah, so it was really short time frame. It mm-hmm. was, I started in 2011, uh, mm-hmm. in, in September and then, uh, graduated in uh, 2013 mm-hmm. and then, yeah. 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 So yeah. pretty short. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Thank you for sharing that a bit of a background here. Um, 
working at Long McQuaid, you've probably been there a number of years by now, hey? You, you've probably been there. Yeah, it's it's been a really long time now that I think about it. Like uh, the other day I had a realization like, wow, it's been seven years already. Like that, that's a long time uh, uh, in, in my head anyways. Yeah, in, yeah. in some cases not, but uh, yeah, it doesn't feel like I've been there for that mm -hmm. long. But uh, mm -hmm. no, it's it's been really good. I really love my Long McQuaid family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, uh, you along the journey, like many of us, also experience uh, kind of the uh, life impact and life kind of uh, challenges as well. Uh, that that I, I think you're going to share some of those as well. So we're going to talk about music. We're going to talk about uh, sort of the the career in general and, and music career in specific. But 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 also the idea of. Um, you know, anxiety that many of us face and, and you'll share some stories about those and, and you'll be able to maybe give us some uh, insights or, or lessons learned that, that, that you have to, out of that journey. So so mm -hmm. maybe what I'll do is I'll start with a, a clip that takes us back. Now, this this Facebook uh, clip that you, you have here, I'm going to play and I think it takes us back uh, quite a ways. Um, do you know the yeah, clip this, I'm referring to? Yeah, it's a 10-year-old video. <laughs> yeah, so let's, let's do that. Let, let's go all the way back there and uh, I'm just going to display so that people I believe this is the video that we want to share is it the waterfront drive mistaken girl yeah okay yeah, so uh, waterfront drive was a band that I was uh, involved in for a short period of time back when I was in uh, Winnipeg this is probably I joined uh, shortly after I graduated high school and uh, this is with a few of uh, high school friends and they're like hey so we we kind of need a bass player like I was I was a guitar player at the yeah. time uh, uh -huh. And uh, they're like, are you able to play bass? And I said, I can play functional bass. <laughs> uh, if anybody knows what that means, I, I can still only play functional bass. My, my partner, Ryan, he's a way better bass player than I yeah. am. Ryan, uh, by the way, yeah. Ryan, Ryan is an awesome guy. I uh, I really liked Ryan. Uh, I met him at Long McQuaid, of course, and uh, just really mm -hmm. liked the guy, so. Yeah, no, he, he's great. Uh, yeah, really killer bass player. And uh, you'll, able, uh, you'll be, uh, a clip of him playing will be in that uh, sleeping traffic video that uh, that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, let's take a look here. And so this is the uh, waterfront uh, mistaken girl here. I'm going to uh, just queue it up and uh, let me know if you can see and hear it. And um, I'll bring it in here and uh, I'll be off camera. doesn't look like the audio is going through. There's still no audio, but I guess while there's no audio, I'll talk a little bit about it. So uh, this was our uh, actually a debut show as Waterfront Drive, because I believe before um, the the three guys that you see there, they they were together and they were called the uh, the Taylor Dimitrioff Band or something like that. And uh, after I joined, they kind of wanted to uh, rebrand it because uh, the the singer there, uh, T. Dimitrioff, he didn't want it to be all about him, but he wanted to wanted it to be a, a group effort. And so uh, named it Waterfront Drive. Uh, Waterfront Drive is uh, actually a uh, a road that's in Winnipeg that's, uh, I think, near the Forks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and yeah, this is from our uh, debut show. I see the uh, fun ears there. What were they? Uh, what kind of ears are those? <laughs> oh, those were uh, some uh, reindeer antlers. It was, it was Christmas at the time. It was like uh, it was a Christmas party of some sort. So uh, decided to be a little festive. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear the audio on your end, but can you hear the audio? No. Oh, really? Okay. Let's uh, try that again. Sorry about that. There we go. Not the best audio quality, but working with what we had at the time. Thank you. 
you know, guitar player exists. A lot of players are <laughs> frowning upon me right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, lots of fun uh, yeah. back. Uh, what year would you say that this was roughly? Um, I it, it was either I want to say either 2009 or 2010. I'm pretty sure around. I think it was 2009 because I think you know, I was still in you know just started my first year at uh, at CMU, and that's when uh, I was playing with this group. Right. So, uh, you know, it's always interesting looking back to our musical, early musical days. And uh, uh, now you said you played guitar and then got into bass to play with this band here. And uh, yeah. Uh, do you play keyboard as well uh, along the way, Lara? Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, yeah, a little bit. In uh, When I was still uh, performing in my solo project, um, I, I do have a keyboard that I bring along with me. I've got a Korg SB1. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'll usually bring that on stage with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Well, thank you for sharing this uh, sort of early uh, installment of the <laughs> musical journey. We're going to go advance to the uh, current day where your band looks quite a bit different and uh, a lot more uh, sophisticated and uh, the lighting and, and all production is quite a bit uh, advanced compared to this. But uh, we all start from somewhere and this was the one of the yeah, yeah. good old days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's uh, continue the conversation here. So uh, if you could share, you know, when you started music, you mentioned that uh, uh, even listening to music in a, a, a language that you did not understand still made you very emotional and even cried along the way. So obviously music mm -hmm. has a, a fundamental kind of connection there. Um, now t tell us, uh, is there any stories of um, kind of music stories that you want to share early on here about uh uh, those kinds of emotions that sort of come over as you perform any specific stories about performances that really resonate with you? Um, I don't have any specific performances in mind. And mm -hmm. uh, that, that time that I was talking about, I was very young, like this is probably between, you know, three to five years old. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I, I just, uh, you know, being able to listen to my parents, you know, like, uh, perform together and hearing my mom sing. Uh, I just thought it was so beautiful. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really great that uh, music can, can be so moving and, uh, you know, uh, at a, at a young age, you know, like even, even if, even though I didn't understand, you know, a word that she was saying, you know, just, just uh, her, her conviction and uh, the way that, she, you know, she had, uh, you know, uh, performed uh, re really moved me. Uh, mm -hmm. from a young age and so you know that that was you know what I knew from a very young age that you know music would be a really huge part of my life and uh, continues to be to this day yeah that's that's awesome thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. so over the years you, you kind of evolve in terms of your, your various music uh, kind of uh, style and whatnot uh, there's a clip here that I want to show it is uh, the wake up um, you know featuring uh, Jay Reds uh, do you want to maybe mm -hmm introduce that before I show that clip? Yeah, so that that one is from my EP, The Experience Collection. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that song in, in particular, I guess, is more of, it, it was a song, I basically wrote it as a, a letter to myself, you know, to, to not um, be so, I guess, let down by anxiety, you know, it, it is basically just like a pump up song, just like, yeah, you can do it. You got the power to do it sort of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. It featured uh, one of my good friends, Jay Reds. He's a local uh, hip hop artist in uh, here in Edmonton and, uh, and yeah, really good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, great. I'm going to play it and we're going to, uh, I'll be just off the camera here. Sure. Get off.
in the air. Somebody set all my senses on shutdown. Someone set sail or I won't survive sundown. What now? Meditation ain't bring solution. My heart was so and so near sight and near useless. It's proved it. The truth is it's human. No matter how it's bruised, it's always healed through evolution. Don't know if I should be holding tight or letting go. Cause if I throw the towel in, then I'll be left without a home. The complexity of the catastrophe around me catalyzes. And I can't help but feel like I'm the one who masterminded. I thought the time under pressure would make a diamond. But I'm divided so many places, don't know I'll find them. Why do I wake, go to sleep, wanting to die? And I try to change my mentality, but I'm denied the catharsis. Can't even breathe, feel like my lungs are collapsing. I need a scream, and so I tried. I scream so loud, I think my chest is caving in. Frustration built up inside, it's about to blow. It with confusion, I don't know what to do. But I reach out. Wake up and shake it off. Look tough, you've got the world to face. Fight for the brighter days, brighter days. You gotta fight for. Yeah, if anybody's curious about that artwork, uh, I actually got that done by an illustrator here. Her name's Tiffany Tate. And uh, yeah, it, it's funny because she, she drew that. And then just as a placeholder, she kind of put red in my hair at the time. I'm like, man, that looks awesome. So like for my debut EP uh, uh, release show, I dyed, purposely dyed it red. And uh, yeah, I, I just love that artwork so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, ask you to uh, walk us through some of the musical moments. Uh, and uh, the way we're going to do it is through some photos. So I'm going to bring up some photos. And uh, mm -hmm. as the photos come up in, in relatively random order, I'd like you to perhaps just, uh, you know, kind of tell us uh, the story or, or tell us uh, where you at in that particular point of your musical journey and, and your life and whatnot. Sure. So I will okay. go ahead and share that. Again, I'll just be off camera here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this one is uh, from a CD release show that I did with uh, Sleeping in Traffic. Uh, Sleeping in Traffic, they are a local uh, progressive, uh, I'm going to leave it at prog because they're some, they sometimes go into metal, sometimes go into like happier stuff. It's, it's a lot of strange things, as you can see, you know, a metal show with a, with a saxophone, if you can see it there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, this was at their CD release show for their album, Feminism. Uh, this was in, I believe, March of 2017. Uh, yeah, uh, they brought me on to, you know, do a lot of uh, harmonies and stuff for the album, and they brought me on to their show. Uh, so I, I guess I've been the uh, unofficial honorary fifth member of the band. They technically mm -hmm. only have four members. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, this is, this is a, a shot from that show. And uh, right in the forefront is uh, my partner, Ryan, there when he still had all his hair. He actually chopped that off uh, a few months right. ago. Right here? Yeah. So that's Ryan. That's, that's you there. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, look at the next photo. There's Ryan again here, and that's you. Yeah, Ryan again there, and uh, this is this is the this is a post show. Uh, we were taking a group photo, and uh, I just love this photo so much because we were all just genuinely, you know, happy. Uh, I know like a lot of guys were like really stressed out about this time, but you know, uh, you know, the show is over, and and uh, this particular photo, it, it was funny because we're all taking it, and uh, the guy uh, to my right there, Corey. We were taking a photo. He's like, "Where's Lara?" He's like, "I, I, I know I'm a small person, but I'm like right here." <laughs> and uh, that was, yeah, so that one's one of my favorite photos uh, yeah. from the show. Oh, so I do that sometimes, looking for my phone when I'm like, it's right there, right? So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. So this is a band that I started back in. I 
I want to say 2013 or 2014, I think. Uh, this was a band called Silhouettes and Accolades. This is one of our uh, promotional photos for it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so this is a five-piece uh, rock group uh, that, that I formed. Uh, it was All of them were uh, Grant Me Kuhn students, uh, killer players, killer writers, for sure. And uh, and yeah, this this band was was short lived. It, we were I think about uh, we we only were together for maybe about a year and a half or two years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, I, I won't get into details, you know, why, why right. we split up. But uh, the the highlights of of this band is that uh, our our very last show we actually got to uh, play at K Days one year. I think that was in back in two thousand fourteen. Awesome. K-Day. So for those yeah. who are not familiar with the Edmonton uh, sort of uh, festivals, K-Day, Klondike Days, it used to be called K-Days. and uh, But but it's the uh, probably the largest exhibition all year, right, in Edmonton uh, in terms of I outdoors so. event. It'd be mm -hmm. similar to, but not quite as, uh, perhaps not quite as um, big as uh, Stampede, you know, Calgary Stampede yeah. would be a little yeah. bit more, a little bit more, um, uh, Rowdier, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Calgary Stampede. All right, so uh, this is the Edmonton K Days that we were referring to. All right, tell us about this photo. I see a uh, nice so, uh, guitar amp in the background there. <laughs> yeah, uh, so player. this is, uh, yeah, so this is uh, Silhouettes and Accolades. This is from our very first show. Uh, we played in October 2013. This was at Bohemia. Um, and yeah, no, this, this was a, uh, Really, really good show. This is this is before they, you know, added. I don't know if you've been there uh, recently, but uh, mm. before they changed management and before they had a stage and everything, they kind of had like a mini stage, and so all right. five of us were kind of right. uh, squished in on a little stage. You'll you'll see in uh, one of the clips uh, yeah. there. But uh, yeah, this is from them. That's uh, my friend uh, Megan Whittington on guitar and singing harmonies with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you uh, singing lead there, I presume, and uh, uh, just just singing, no guitar at that time. Yeah, just singing at that time. Cool. We've seen this in uh, the video clip that we saw earlier, right? Yeah, yeah. So so this is the uh, the illustration uh, that uh, that I had made for this album, and and I really love it a lot. How many songs on this uh, album? Uh, there is five tracks. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when was it released, Lara? Uh, uh, this was released uh, November 2017, so, so about uh, two and a half years ago. Yeah, fairly recent. Mm -hmm. This is going way, way back. How yeah, many years? Uh, when was uh, this, roughly? Probably about 10 or 9 years ago. This is when I was still uh, playing for Waterfront Drive. Uh, I, I kind of forget exactly. Uh, well, I know exactly where this show was. I can't exactly remember. Uh, the the venue. name of the place, yeah, the name of the venue. This is back in Winnipeg. This is uh, just off of uh, Osborne Street. If uh, yeah. any of my Winnipeg friends know mm -hmm. where that is, I'm sure you all do. <laughs> I don't. It's funny because <laughs> one, one time I had a, a client in in Winnipeg, and the first time I visited them, I realized my client is on Edmonton Street. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know Edmonton Street in Winnipeg, but uh, yeah, there's a street called. Edmonton yeah, I, street. I don't know where it is, but I've definitely heard of it before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Edmonton Street. That's funny. Mm -hmm. It's an awesome photo here. You, you guys are in the yeah, midst this, of it. Yeah, this is uh, taken by one of our good friends, uh, Graham, and uh, yeah. So this is from uh, another Sleeping in Traffic CD release. This was uh, back in October of last year. I believe, mm -hmm. if, if I have that correct. Yeah, so they released a, a dual EP, actually. Um, so uh, one was kind of designed to be as, you know, a, a lighter, more upbeat uh, album uh, EP. The other one was created to be like a really heavier, uh, kind of capturing the weirder side of them. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, from that show. This was uh, all, they produced this show by themselves. They, they didn't have any, you know, uh, promoters or anything. This is at the Wellington Community Hall, uh, mm -hmm. way up on the on the north side of Edmonton. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, that, that stage box, my dad actually uh, built that for me and uh, definitely came in handy. You know, when your dad builds stuff for your stage performances, uh, you know you got a musical family, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't really tell him what it was for. I'm like, I, I need, hey dad, I need a box that's, you know, one foot high and then two by three feet and he's like okay got it you got well, you 
That's even better. That's even better. Here's a dad that built anything you reorder, not even uh, yeah. knowing what it's for. That's that's even more yeah. awesome. So is that is that um, uh, Ryan on the uh, base back there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's cool. Ryan back there on the base, and uh, Corey Bossy in the front on the uh, on so, so you guys, vocals. You guys play a lot of music and perform a lot, a lot of um, shows together. Then, hey. Yeah. It, it it's funny because uh, it initially started you know after they um released their their very first uh self-titled ep um mm -hmm. they had you know a lot of music in the works and uh you know Corey was looking for someone to do harmonies on it and mm -hmm. i was like yeah if you need anybody i'm definitely in and you know it's it's been really good there i'm kind of biased for this band they're they're mm -hmm. one of my favorite local bands but mm -hmm. uh they they are really good every i've never seen a band so you know interconnected and mm -hmm. just uh, they they just perform so well together, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I'm really glad to have been you know an honorary member of that group. As musicians might say, yeah, it's a tight band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and this is another clip from that show with the uh, with the lighting. Uh, I remember it, at this show, uh, Corey Bossy, the lead singer, he he's a he's an audio guy. He's a lighting tech guy as well, and so. Um, you know, he, he was out of town and every minute that he had, he was programming lights for this show. And oh, wow. I think he said he finished programming the lights maybe about, uh, half an hour before yeah, yeah. the Just show started. Time. So, <laughs> yeah, so it was a lot of work and, uh, you know, setting up that stage was a lot of work, but, uh, definitely well worth it. It was a really great show. You know, as I said, uh, the other day to one of my other guests, um, uh, the journey from good to excellent takes a lot of details to uh, be, you know, mm -hmm. kind of attended to and whatnot. And uh, you go to something, whether it's a show or, or whatever it is, and you see a certain level uh, compared to a lower level. Um, it just, I'm just reminded of how much it takes to uh, to get from, uh, you know, kind of good, good enough or whatever to just, just awesome or excellent. Right. So. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, tell us about this uh, photo. Okay, this is going so, back a bit further. Yeah, going back. This is uh, with Waterfront Drive. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, so this is a performance at uh, CMU, actually, at uh, one of their campuses. They actually, they had two campuses. One was kind of in like a like a big castle looking thing. They're, they're still there. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I can't exactly remember which event this was for, but this is one of the uh, the, the shows that I got to play with them. I think this is one of the, uh, we, we actually got to, uh, it'd be one of the songs that that I wrote for the band at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, lots of fun. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing those, and uh, much appreciate the uh, kind of the journey there that you've taken us through. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to take those photos off screen here. Um, maybe we'll um, kind of uh, detour from the music a little bit and tell us some of the kind of challenges you have um, encountered, like many of those, uh, many of us in our lives, uh, and maybe some lessons you learned from it. Uh, anxiety is something that that uh, many of us sort of deal with from time to time do you have a story or two to share about that and uh sure yeah i can definitely talk about that uh yeah it, it's it's been really you know great that uh nowadays a lot of people are you know uh bringing mental illness you know to the forefront and you know talking about it more because mm -hmm. you know the the most important thing you know if you're going through anxiety depression or whatever um is to is to talk about it Mm -hmm. um, so um, I guess anxiety for me um, started at a young age, though, uh, when I was really young, like I didn't realize it, uh, didn't think of it as anxiety at the time. Uh, growing up, my mom would uh, would call me a worry wart. You know, I would mm -hmm. worry about everything, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, growing up um, there, there there was a lot of, you know, uh, worrying about what other people thought of me and so you know I, I i was kind of taught at the time you know uh appearance and uh you know first impressions is is everything you know what people think about you uh mm -hmm. is, is an important thing and you know um, that's something that i've kind of carried with me uh through through my childhood and mm -hmm. uh you know i i didn't really recognize um it as anxiety until maybe about i want to say six years ago Mm -hmm. Um, so I think what brought that on was, um, this is when, uh, my, my first project that I put together, uh, silhouettes and accolades. This is, um, after, you know, we, we split up at the as a band mm -hmm. and, uh, at, at that time, you know, uh, when you, when you create a band, at least 
for me anyways it's kind of like this is this is my baby this is my project i want this to thrive mm -hmm. um and uh it and when the band split up it it kind of uh, i in my eyes i kind of thought of that as sort of a failure and mm -hmm. that you know maybe i i didn't do good enough i i wasn't enough and so you know, that's, that's when a lot of the anxiety start to come on. And then, you know, uh, I, I was definitely an overthinker as well. Mm. So, you know, like every, any, and, and honestly, to this day, I, I still deal with anxiety. I'm, I'm a lot better at managing it, but, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, at the time, you know, somebody would, you know, say something off to me and I'm like, what does that mean? And I would, you know, <laughs> uh, ruminate over it over and over and over. And, you know, th that sort of thing, ruminating, it's, it's, uh, the, the bane of anxiety's existence, you know, uh, or I don't, I don't know if I use that term correctly, but, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, so definitely, uh, yeah. And, you know, I've learned to cope with it over the years, you know, uh, it's, it's only been, you know, in the past couple of years that I've realized, you know, uh, true happiness comes from, you know, uh, freedom and making yourself happy and, you know, uh, not caring about what others think, uh, of you, you know, uh, not, you know, no matter who you are, what your background is, mm -hmm. uh, what you look like, what your body size is, like, I, I'm definitely uh, uh, all for, you know, body positivity. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, no, definitely having uh, a partner around Ryan, he, he's definitely uh, helped with, uh, with, you know, mm -hmm. with me coping with a lot of my anxiety. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it still comes up from time to time, but uh, I've just, you know, found a lot of better ways to manage it. Uh, music has been a huge part of that. Uh, the Me Experience Collection is, um, it, was, it was kind of cathartic because uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the songs, like it, it was kind of writing out my feelings and, you know, at, mm -hmm. at the time I was like, I don't know if this makes any sense, but I'm just gonna, you know, put it out into words, put the music to it and uh, mm -hmm. kind of go from there. And then uh, that's the, the Experience Collection uh, mm -hmm. was a thing and, you know, uh, still, you know, I, I still, uh, when it comes to writing, I still, it's, it's still pretty dark, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's funny because, uh, this, the new group that I'm in, Teacup Romance, uh, you think, oh, it's going to be all about love songs. It's like, no, it's definitely <laughs> not at all. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's definitely been a journey for sure. And, you know, uh, if, if I could give any advice to, you know, anybody suffering with anxiety, you know, talk, talk to people. Mm -hmm. uh, they're talk to your friends. They're they're there for you, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, uh, try not to to overthink things because overthinking uh, definitely can get you into that routine of like oh, uh, reading into things too much. Yeah. You, you yeah. know, you, you don't want to do that. You know, you want to uh, take things with a with a grain of salt. You bet. You know, I mm -hmm. uh, one thought that I, I often share with people is uh, if you want to be happier and and more successful and more productive in life. Uh, just be careful what you care about, right? Because early mm -hmm. on in our life, we, we tend to care about a lot of things and everything, and we're not selective about what to care about and what not to care about, right? And so along the way, we just have to figure out, uh, you know, that there are things in life that uh, we are best not to care so much about and, and just focus what it is that we care about, right? So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's, actually, there's actually a book I have that really helps me. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, a lot of people have probably seen this book. It's the subtle art of not giving an F. Put it up again. Put it up again for me. I'm going to just uh, do this. Uh, hold on. I'm going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, pardon the, uh, the swear yeah. word here, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this, this is, it's, it's hilarious. It's, it's been, uh, really good. You know, uh, exactly what you said, you know, being selective about, you know, what mm -hmm. you, what you care about. Cause you know, you can't care. You about everything you can't give an f about everything you know mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if, if you do care about absolutely everything then you know you're you're just going to be in that hole yeah. of uh, you know caring caring yeah. too much about everything yeah but basically so, you uh, lose you, you lose your control you basically let the world dictate your thoughts and mm -hmm. feelings rather than having a choice about where you focus and, and where you're not focusing right so mm -hmm. yeah. exactly yeah mm -hmm. so thank you for sharing that now in terms mm -hmm. of uh you know, music. Uh, tell us a bit about your work in the pro audio kind of uh, sector, because uh, traditionally there's not a lot of um, uh, women in that particular field. Uh, is it changing? No. Has it changed? Uh, tell us more. Um, I, I feel like it, it is starting to change. It is a very slow change. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So when I when I started, I was uh, e even when I was in school in recording, I was uh, one of maybe three girls that was mm -hmm. in the recording program at McEwen. Uh, how many in the class altogether, roughly? Uh, I want to say maybe about like 15 to 20 people. So, right. so it was right. a pretty small class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I was one of uh, three to three or four girls. I can't exactly yeah, yeah. So about 20%. 20%. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's definitely been interesting uh, being in the audio industry, you know, um, is, especially working at Long and Quaid because uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's really the only sec or I guess uh, department that I ever really worked in mm -hmm. pro audio and recording. And uh, the, the thing that, you know, kind of sucks about it is because the, the music industry, especially the pro audio industry um, mm -hmm. is, is kind of sexist. And so, you know, yeah. uh, I, I'd have a lot of people, you know, uh, you know, ask me for my opinion on something. And then uh, when, when I go away to like, go get something, they'll, they'll turn to my, my male coworker and ask uh -huh. them the same question. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess I, I don't know why you asked me about it but uh yeah. if, if you're not gonna you know take take my uh yeah. advice then yeah. you know it and uh you know it's it's been really good that you know long and McQuaid has been you know really trying to focus on uh yeah. you know having having more women work at their stores um yeah. and you know uh em empowering women and you know yeah. uh, not have any sort of uh discrimination yeah. and stuff like that but uh but yeah, they're, they're still sometimes, you know, working at, at the store, like e even after me being there for seven years, yeah. uh, a, a lot of people, uh, for whatever reason, don't mm -hmm. take me seriously. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's be uh, mm -hmm. maybe because I'm a woman, maybe because I have blue hair. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it, it would be nice, you know, for, for there to be a shift. And so yeah. that, you know, uh, the, the audio and tech industry, it's not just for men, it's for mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. yeah, I think we're heading that way. I think uh, we're heading that way. It might be a little slow, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I must say, though, like you said, uh, Long McQuaid, you, you quite enjoy working there. And uh, everybody who I know who worked at Long McQuaid has nothing but great things to say about the experience uh, uh, at that store. Obviously, they're, they're, they're quite successful and, and rightly so. And so have lots of locations and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, the, the whole uh, kind of recording and sound engineering, um, yeah, it's continued to evolve. And with all the digital mm -hmm. stuff and whatnot, uh, uh, I think there's going to be some people who might even feel like they don't um, – they don't like the new world the way it's sort of shaping up to be. Yeah. And then there are other, you know, perhaps younger people who are saying, this is my time, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, they, there's still a lot of people who come in and like, yeah, man, I, I'm just an analog guy. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know what to do with like this digital stuff. It's like, okay, well, I mean, it's good to know the analog, but with the way the industry is going, it's probably going to be good for you to, you know, hop oh. on the digital train because that's, yeah, because a lot, because a lot of venues, you know, they'll they'll have digital boards, and you know, you bring an analog guy in who's never used it, yeah. and uh, they're they're kind of in hot water. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like to share the next clip, and uh, I think it's the uh, is it Von uh, Von Hoy and uh, this town. Uh, mm -hmm. Give us a quick intro on that while I queue it up for everybody. Yeah, so Von Hoy, uh, he he's also another local artist uh, based here in Edmonton uh, in indie folk. Uh, type of stuff and uh, I actually met him through uh, working at Long and McQuaid you know I I'd, you know helped him with a few orders and stuff and then there is uh, hadn't seen him for a really long time uh, and then there was uh, one day he came in and uh, he he talked to me and then uh, he remembered in a conversation we had a long time ago you know uh, that that I was a singer and so uh, yeah he he connect we connected and he's like hey I'm I'm recording an album right now and uh, yeah I would love you to do uh, some harmonies on it and uh, I was like yeah this, that'd be great and uh, yeah and uh, this this uh, particular clip here this is from his uh, debut uh, album release which was uh, it, it was a really nice show it was actually a house show um, it was very intimate and uh, yeah played with a uh, five-piece band mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and uh, yeah really really great guy I, I really appreciate that uh, he brought me on for this project tell me if you can hear the sound this town, tears and grease, freeze and rain in the crease. Ah, ah, ah. This town, fast money and pain, alcohol and dust and a little rain.
Fantastic. Tell us more. Uh, tell us more about Von Hoy, who, for those who may not uh, know uh, much about him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, local uh, indie artist uh, here in Edmonton. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. He. Uh, he. I haven't really seen. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he's playing currently right now, mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah, local indie folk artist. Uh, definitely. Um, He's been, he's been around for a long time. He he's definitely had like a few EPs and stuff. I think this uh, this one was his second uh, studio album. It was all I think most of it was recorded at uh, oh what was the studio uh, that's off uh, Stu Kirkwood's studio on the west mm -hmm. side uh, Sound Extractor. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. all it was all recorded there. But uh, but yeah, really really great artist. Uh, uh, he he had a lot of um, interesting tunings. Uh, uh, I found with his guitar, it, it was his guitar wasn't ever really uh, record. I guess um, in standard e tuning, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, no, definitely interesting, uh, interesting artist for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's great. Um, so, so tell us more. Is it, do you prefer um, uh, kind of uh, doing harmony, or do you prefer doing uh, lead vocal? I know for me, uh, I'm not much of a singer, but when I do sing. I'm much more comfortable with lead vocal because the harmony thing is actually a lot more difficult, a lot more technically challenging to get harmony right and whatnot. So, so whenever I sing, I tend to do the uh, uh, the, the melody thing and not the harmony. Right. Yeah. Honestly, I, I really love doing both. Mm -hmm. um, both, you know, kind of have their uh, their thing. You know, uh, being mm -hmm. being you know fronting fronting for a few bands. No, you get to you get to be the deliverer of the message. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when when you're doing harmony, you know, it's, it's uh, I've, you know, sang, sang in a lot of choirs for, for uh, you know, for as, as long as I can remember. So, you know, harmonizing with people, uh, mm -hmm. def definitely uh, something that you, uh, you know, if you do for a really long time, it comes easy. If, if you don't, uh, then uh, no better time to do it than now. Right. But yeah. uh, but uh, but yeah, no, I really love both. I really love singing with other people and uh Hunting for bands is really fun as well. Yeah, no, I I need to spend more time doing harmony because every time now I don't sing as often as I play guitar. That's my main thing. But uh, but but whenever I do sing, uh, I just for whatever reason gravitate towards the melody and and uh, I just never really spent enough time with harmony. But but I, so I know and respect how how you know complex it is to to actually be able to get it right all the time there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so tell us more. That there's another clip that I wanted to show. Maybe introduce it uh, for us in terms of. Uh, there's a clip here with the. Uh, is it J Reds and the, the, the that path? Uh, if uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So J Reds uh, and uh, like I mentioned before, he's a local hip hop artist uh, here in Edmonton. Uh, a really good friend of mine, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he he's very active in the in the hip hop scene. Uh, he he's also a, a promoter as well. So. Um, he he's got his uh, own promotion company, um, and uh, and yeah, and uh, I actually taught him uh, voice lessons uh, for for a little bit for maybe about a, a year or two, and uh, you can definitely tell that uh, uh, from when uh, when he from when we started to where he is now, like his his technique and uh, singing ability has you know just gone up greatly, and uh, and yeah, no, it's been it's been really good to connect with him, and you know. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, teach someone else uh, my craft. Yeah. Yeah, let's take a listen. In your hand, long enough it petrifies, materializes with rocks and a price or a pipe. And I know the ciphers will be boring without all these stories, but could you laugh if you had passed up your path to glory? This path to glory has stolen everything from me that was important. This path to glory has stolen everything from me that was important. This path to glory has stolen everything from me that was important. This path to glory has stolen, stolen everything from me that was important. I just wanted to say it'll be okay. Roam free, we may. It's another dream, another day. But now we're sinking in the tar pit, cause life ain't got to harness. The race will never end to see who can go the farthest.
Cool. Tell us more about that. Uh, obviously, a bit more sort of a modern music, I, I, very strong bass beat there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, they're definitely definitely hip hop for sure, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, this this is actually uh, mixed by uh, by Ryan as well. Uh, he he's actually best friends uh, with mm -hmm. Ryan, so that's how I got to know him and uh, mm -hmm. and you know his, his music, and uh, that's how he uh, was able to connect with me and uh, you know do do some mm -hmm. vocal coaching. You know, uh, that's another reminder for for those who are listening right now. Uh, I see, um, uh, you know, the idea of um, our life typically takes the path of uh, kind of who we hang out with. So, so you know, when we hang out with certain people, certain opportunities become available. That's very easy to kind of evaluate and and take on and whatnot. So, so if we're mm -hmm. very conscious of who we hang around with. Um, that tends to evolve, uh, kind of contribute to our life uh, evolution over the long run, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, especially in the music industry, it's all about who you know. And, you know, if you connect with people, uh, you can definitely create some uh, beautiful music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Now, there's a clip here that I want to show. It's the uh, uh, is it Silhouette uh, and Accolades, uh, Dark Shadows. Maybe give us a quick mm -hmm. intro on that. Yeah, so uh, this this clip here, uh, it's from uh, our, our very Silhouettes and Accolades' very first show, mm -hmm. and uh, Dark Shadows. This was written uh, by our uh, rhythm guitarist Megan, and uh, and yeah, that's uh, I don't know, I don't have heck of a lot to say about yeah. it, but uh, yeah. I definitely a lot of good memories from from this show for sure for yeah, being yeah. the very first one. Oh really? Yeah, nice. Yeah, the very the very first show, and this was kind of you know. Uh, for, for myself, the very first show outside of McEwen. And so that, that was a really big thing for me, you know, be able to uh, uh, play for an actual like public audience. Uh, so this is like your first job after university kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, let's uh, hit play and uh, listen to it here. Sorry, I think you're, I can't hear your audio. Thank you. I, I, I muted myself yeah, no to worries. prevent it. Um, this was your first gig after the university, you were saying, and uh, mm -hmm. um, that particular band, that particular kind of format, uh, did it run for a long time or did it uh, evolve? This was, a, this was kind of a short, shorter project. Like this is a, the first band that I had, uh, you know, cre created. And I think we were, we were only together for maybe about like a year and a half or or two mm -hmm. years yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. cool now yeah. th there's one more video that i want to show and that is the uh, it says just an echo uh, maybe give us a quick intro mm -hmm. of that yeah yeah so this video uh the one i was talking about so this is from uh sleepy in traffic's uh, uh album release uh feminism so this is back in uh, march of 2017 which is three years ago which it, it feels like it wasn't that long ago but uh but yeah, this is at uh, at the Forge on White Avenue when the, the Forge was still an active venue, mm -hmm. and uh, and yeah, they they also had brought in uh, a trumpet player uh, for for their set as well. So you know, uh, you would think that you know trumpets don't belong in Prague, but you know I feel like with Prague 
uh, any anything goes really, uh, especially <laughs> for sleeping in traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's let's take a listen here. Way better bass player than I am. Yes. We just let go. Does Ryan do vocals as well? No, he just does bass. He also does all of the uh, the technical stuff behind the scenes. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, so lots of different bands over the years uh, uh, with your. You know, I'm I'm so happy and and proud that you're able to not only play music and be in so many different bands and you know create CDs and and things like that. But also work at a musical instrument store. Uh, so, so basically, your whole life just 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 revolves around music and people yeah. within the music community. Yeah, exactly. Music has you know always been the one constant uh, in my life, and you know it, it's been great. You know, uh, mm -hmm. music does a lot of a lot of things for me. I'm sure it does you know a lot of things for other people. But uh, it's really good to you know use music as a as a way to connect with other people as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ooh. awesome. Awesome. So tell us more um, as we sort of round the corner on the hour here. Uh, are there mm -hmm. stories or, or anecdotes or, or insights or, or advice or wisdom that you want to pass on to uh, those who are listening uh, that you've learned from your journey so far? Well, uh, I guess, you know, as I said before, you know, with uh, when it comes to, you know, coping with anxiety, you know, talk to people. They're there for you. Um, and uh, you know, try to try to connect with as many uh, people as you can. But uh, but you know, try to try to create you know those those strong connections. You know, especially being in the music community, uh, it, it definitely brought up uh, you know a lot of opportunities. You know, to to play with people, to to meet other musicians, and you know, just uh, just you know, be be friends. You know, ed here in Edmonton, it's a really tight uh, you know music community, but uh, but very very tight knit, and uh, yeah, we're we're all there for each other. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just try to make you know as many great connections uh, as you can in your life, and then you'll have a really good uh, support network when you need it. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, just in case, um, uh, I don't know if you can see uh, the uh, screen that uh, I'm sharing here. There's a few audio clips. Uh, now, are there any of these that you'd like to uh, share with the audience uh, while we're still on? I assume you are okay mm -hmm. for time, Lara. I mean, if, if you've oh, yeah, had a absolutely. meeting that you need to be at, I'm okay for time, so we can extend it a bit if you want to. But um, yeah. which one of these, if any, would you like us to kind of play and uh, just share with our, our viewers? Ah, so, <laughs> yeah, so there, there is a clip uh, from, my, from the brand new project, uh, mm -hmm. Teacup Romance. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ryan, Ryan's actually in, the, in that band as well, but... Uh, but yeah, so it, it was funny because all of the all of the guys that are in this project, uh, they're they're all they all come from uh, metal backgrounds. They they all you know played with metal bands like uh, our our drummer Jonathan Webster. Uh, he plays with Striker. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, you probably know them. Uh, big bigger mm -hmm. uh, Edmonton band. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, there it was funny. It was brought up one day. You know, they're they're all just you know prog and metal guys who want to play something fun and not you know, think too hard about what they're playing. Like, you know, with sleeping in traffic, uh, it's so tech, tech heavy in terms of, you know, technique, like every show that I've played with them, like it's always to a click. We got a click going, we got, you know, uh, backing tracks and stuff. And, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, Teacup Romance is just, you know, a lot of fun for us. And, you know, play, playing the music of, you know, our, our, our childhood, essentially, you know, with, uh, uh, you know, influences from like Blink-182 and, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so that clip there, uh, I believe uh, that that song uh, is a clip uh, from from our EP. Uh, this particular song is called "Lost at Sea." Uh, you bet. I'm gonna hit play and let me know if you can hear it or not. Sure. 
the very first time that uh that it's been heard anywhere publicly so this is the debut there uh, you go awesome showing. i'm happy to be part of that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so tell us let's play all these uh, five actually if you have time uh, i can extend sure, this, yeah. this conversation so tell me which one to play next um okay let's see uh let's the... plug uh, some more sleeping in traffic. So yeah, there's a uh, sleeping in traffic. Gail shrugged uh, featured mm -hmm. L. Uh, yeah, let's let's go yeah, with that. Yeah, so so that one, uh, guy shrugged. That is from their uh, EP, that which oh, destroys us. Yeah, really, really weird stuff. As you heard a little clip there, but, uh, but yeah, this is probably uh, one of one of their heaviest songs, uh, okay. yeah, at least in my opinion. But also also one of my favorites as well, just because there's so much uh, so much feeling behind it. Uh, let me, uh, okay, so uh, let me start the playing here. Consequences are catching up to us. Mass extinction spells our final hours. Every day. I don't know if you hear a lot of that on your show. <laughs> <laughs> this is unique. This is awesome. You know, uh, so all of a sudden you have your kind of uh, high female voice uh, soaring through all of that uh, sort of more low kind of low pitch noises, right? Uh, low pitch mm -hmm. sounds and uh, almost, uh, yeah. almost make me think of uh, Transformer for some reason just now. I <laughs> Transformer, you know. Is the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell us which one to uh, go next. Uh, you got uh, uh, jagged veins. We have uh, goes black. We have uh, mm -hmm. X uh, X O uh, planets. We can play uh, jagged veins. So that one is another song off of uh, my my EP, the Experience Collection. And uh, I think this is the very first song that I wrote about uh, dealing with anxiety. And this is one of the ones uh, you know where I was like, I'm just going to write a bunch of words. I don't know if it's going to make any sense, but uh, write down a bunch of words, put some music to it, and then uh, we got a song. You know, that's, mm -hmm. I guess, how songwriting goes. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you you know you've got uh, a particular feel down when you can be relaxed about it, you know. Uh, guys yeah. like me who have only written, like, three or four songs, four songs so far, and frankly, not very good at it uh, yet, um, take a lot of contemplation before you even start your next one. Whereas, uh, you know, you get yeah. to a point, uh, I'm sure, where, where just like any sort of discipline, where you can just sort of um, kind of whip another one up and it may not be perfect, but you're comfortable with doing that, right? Yeah, you know, songwriting, is all, it's a really long process, you know. It, it, it took me a really long time to, you know, actually, uh, you know, like I, I had written the song, you know, I had the form, you know, verse, chorus, whatever. And uh, it 
uh, this album was uh, all, all produced by myself as well. And so, you know, um, it, it took me a really long time, you know, to put the musical elements to it. And uh, with songwriting, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, work, working a muscle, right? Uh, if, if you don't do it as often, then, you know, you're, you're probably not going to write as much, you know, might not come up with good ideas. If you do it all the time, you know, you might get some stupid ideas and that's totally okay. It's just mm -hmm. about, you know, the process, you know, uh, just having uh, it all, you know, uh, written out and, uh, you know, and then you can go in and, you know, choose what you think is good or good enough to, to show anybody. And, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's a complete process. Absolutely. Just, just like writing books, I understand the best way mm -hmm. to deal with it is just do a brain dump and then write, 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 and then editing will come. Uh, you just can't mm -hmm. be editing while you're trying to get your thoughts out, right? Uh, you never go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So let's, yeah, listen, exactly. let's take a listen here. Can you hear it? Yep. Here I am again, stuck inside these walls, a shell of me. I want to come out. Yeah, this particular EP, I tried to keep it, you know, as small of a group of people as, as possible. So yep. I did all the songwriting, did uh, all the electronic production. Uh, I got uh, Ryan to do some production and then he mixed and mastered it. And uh, yeah, I've got one feature on there and mm -hmm. uh, one illustrator, one uh, CD, CD printing guy. And so there was only about six people uh, involved in this project, but I'm, I'm really proud that uh, we were able to pull something like this off with so few people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Don't help me, I don't want to burden you. You know, it always amazed me to hear somebody singing and then to hear their speaking voice. It's hard to even say, you know, that's the same person, hey? Do you feel? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Definitely. Like, uh, you know, you, 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 like a lot of my coworkers, uh, you know, I talk to them every day. I know what their voice sounds like, but their singing voice is just so different and distinct. And that's what I love about singing is that everyone's got something different to bring to the table. Great voice, by the way. Great voice. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying you know, if I was listening to this, this could very well be some big international hit somewhere, you know. Um, just greatest hits of the decade, and it wouldn't sound any better than this in terms of the vocals. is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So I was playing. Tell us what other instruments do you play? Do you play guitar, bass, uh, Yeah, uh, I play guitar. Uh, I'm, it's, it's funny about, you know, uh, multi-instrumentalists. Uh, they're never really experts about one thing. They're only just like uh, pretty good at a variety of instruments. So uh, I, I don't really call myself an expert. You know, the, the most that I have uh, experience with is, uh, is singing. So I've done it my whole life. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I uh, grew up playing piano. I actually did classical piano uh, growing up. You know, I got as far as, you know, uh, grade eight RCM, uh, Royal, Royal Conservatory of Music. And uh, I, I haven't been at that level for a long time. You know, I, I really want to get back into it. But uh, but yeah, it's, uh, just the guitar I'll usually play. And uh, yeah, for, for drums and bass, it's all very uh, functional more than anything. So I, I, can, I can give you a functional bass line. I can give you functional drum line. But like anything other than that, like it's eh, kind of there. Well, you know, your vocal is fantastic. Fantastic vocal. This is, in my mind, world class. World class. Thank you. I really appreciate that. The music and the lyrics as well. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes it's like waves coursing through my jagged veins. I really enjoy that this is turning into a listening party. <laughs> oh, you bet. You know, this is awesome music. I Thank bet you. If you play this anywhere, people would say that's not a local artist. That's like international famous, you know, singer somewhere. Yeah, over here. <laughs> probably one of my favorite keyboard patches. This is actually the very first patch that loads up on the Korg SV1. It has a very roadsy type okay. vibe. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. No, I uh it's a great song and again for our viewers, the, this is uh Lara wrote both the music and lyric for this and uh, of course do the vocals. Did you do any instruments on this yourself or just vocals? Uh, pr pretty much everything on there like all of the uh, all of the electronic instrumentation I did oh, nice. that uh, I yeah I did all the all the production myself you know Ryan he added you know a few elements here and there but uh, mm -hmm. it, it was mostly me and I'm pretty proud to to yeah. say you, you know that it, it was self-produced. Yeah, th this is an awesome, an awesome song and uh, great vocals. Uh, Jagged veins. Uh, is it uh, which CD is this on, or which uh, album is this on, or is it? Uh... Uh, this is from uh, the Experience Collection. All right, cool. The Experience yeah. Collection. Mm -hmm. Right. So, is there another um, clip that you'd like to share briefly with our audience here, our viewer here? Um, we we shared three or four of these, I think. Uh, yeah, goes, sure. Goes uh... black. We haven't done and uh, extra planet, exoplanet. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so uh, we can we can do the silhouettes and accolades. Uh, I, I did upload a, a shortened clip of it, so I don't know if you uh, got that. I, I did that probably right before the the interview, so I don't know if you have. Oh, that. I see. No, I don't because what happened is I uh, I copied it down, right? So uh, oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, let me just go back and find it. Go ahead and introduce it while I find it for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, so this is from uh, silhouettes and accolades uh, from about. Uh, six years ago and uh, -huh. uh yeah this is also another song that was written uh by our uh, rhythm guitarist uh, megan whittington uh goes black uh yeah this is this is uh the the one and only song that i actually uh that i was the engineer on i recorded edited mixed and everything uh i will say probably probably not my best work but uh you know it's a definitely a first for sure mm -hmm. and uh mm -hmm. you know there's definitely something to be said about, you know, mixing your own vocals. You know, you become very hypercritical of, uh, of you know, what you sound like. Is this the one? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear it? Yes. Yeah. And now that I remember, I think I, I played bass on this one too. I like the bass lines. Okay, very simple, but very... Groovy. Awesome. Awesome. Is awesome. there another another clip that you like to uh, to play? Uh, yeah, I guess there there's one more clip. Uh, so this is with uh, Sleeping in Traffic again. Uh, this is okay. from uh, their dual EP from about two and a half years ago. This is on the That Which Saves Us EP, the more 
the the lighter uh, of the two EPs. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, well, lots lots of fun on this one. So, very very cool synth element traffic, to it. Is it the ten thirty or uh, no? I'm trying to get the. Is it uh, in your uh, Google Drive? Yeah, yeah, it should be in the Google Drive folder, uh, Sleeping Traffic Exoplanets. Oh, Exoplanet, that's the key. So uh, I, I have yeah. it. In fact, I have it downloaded here. So Exoplanet, here it is. Mm -hmm. That one? Mm admired uh Corey and uh his, his vocal ability because he mm -hmm. has such a good voice but uh, he can also do more of that metal stream stuff and he's able to put on a clip of the dime so definitely admire that a bit. For anybody that's you know curious about any or all of these bands um, I'll uh, I'll put them in the description uh, or in the comments after uh, this is done, and so you guys can can check them out and uh, and support local bands. Absolutely, it's uh, <laughs> really for me. It's quite a pleasant surprise how many things you've gotten into and uh, how uh, awesome uh, many of these things are, and uh, uh, in particular how how great of a vocalist you are and. Uh, Oh, this is uh, this is awesome, fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because, uh, like I said in the beginning, you know, uh, it, it wasn't until you know I started going through you know old photos and videos that uh, I, I have been involved in a lot more than what I give myself credit for. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, being uh, you know being involved in so many uh, different musical genres, you know, to to being. Uh, singing in in uh, you know chamber choirs and doing classical music and then you know doing the whole electro pop thing and then being involved in the in a progressive uh, uh, metal project as well so uh, yeah it's definitely uh, good to be in a variety of projects mm -hmm. yeah d d definitely not a one trick pony by any mean and uh, you have some <laughs> uh, you know balancing diversity to um, your um, musical journey and that's always refreshing to see and. Uh, so, uh, mm. yeah, as we round around the corner on, on wrapping this up, um, if you have any stories or any uh, thoughts that you want to share or any words that you want to highlight, uh, um, yeah, feel free to inject anything that we haven't covered uh, yet. Uh, yeah, I guess for sure. Uh, you know, the, uh, the music scene right now is, uh, pretty, I, I think for everybody right now, you know, with COVID-19 going on, it, it, it seems uh pretty grim right now it's it's good that you know alberta's you know in stage one of uh you know relaunching the you know but we all all got to be careful but uh but yeah definitely uh some of some of the people who uh, are are suffering the most uh right now i and, and i can't you know speak for everyone is like you know the the music and uh, the the live music industry uh in general is suffering you know uh no venue right now is uh 
is, you know, operating and, you know, a lot of uh, musicians, you know, uh, are just strictly a freelance musician, uh, you know, are, are all struggling right now. And so, you know, if in any way that you can, you know, if you can uh, support, uh, you know, uh, music, uh, it doesn't have to even be, you know, monetarily as well. You know, if you if you want to, you know, support, show support for your uh, local bands, you know, you can always share their music, listen to their music, stream music. Uh, and, you know, if, if you can buy an album or, uh, you know, buy some of their merch uh, and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, a, a lot of the local artists and, uh, you know, freelance musicians, uh, they, they definitely need a lot of help right now. And so mm-hmm. uh, if you can support doesn't have to be uh, with money, you can share and listen to their music and, you know, and, uh, and, you know, connect with them, you know, if you mm-hmm. can. Kindness doesn't cost money. Uh, no. Kindness can be in whatever format. And uh, uh, so let's be extra kind, uh, particularly to people mm-hmm. who are most impacted by this particular uh, pandemic here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and, I, and I'm glad you've been able to, you know, to, to put this show on, you know, to still be able to, you know, uh, connect with other people, you know, in such a different way, you know, we can't meet in person, but, uh, but yeah, this mm-hmm. has been really great, you know. Wonderful. Well, well, thank you so much, Lara. Now, before I let you go, uh, I'd like you to maybe summarize what you've been discussing here in the last hour and a bit uh, into three words. Let's play that game. Let us do the three words. Can can you uh, sort of encapsulate or summarize uh, if our viewers sort of go away and and, want to remember this conversation? What might both those three words be that might be top of mind? Okay. Uh, The first word that comes to mind is music, for sure. That's been, you know, uh, in a, in evolving. It's it's pretty much uh, everything that I do involves music. Mm-hmm. Uh, two would be community. Uh, you know, being able to connect with so many different local artists, and uh, and I guess the third, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, variety. You know, being able to uh, be involved in so many different musical projects and genres. You know, has has really been a, a privilege uh, to be a part of. And so, you know, uh, just having variety in in your life you know whether it be music or or whatever that you yeah, absolutely as they say as it's been said you know variety is the spice of life they say right exactly so, so yeah. spice spice it up a bit and, and have some variety in what you do uh, so uh, again thank you so much lara mm-hmm. for uh, joining us and uh, i know our viewers who watch later and even now uh will be able to see comments that uh, is in the thread there and and uh uh, if you comment uh, now or later, uh, viewers or folks, um, Lara can certainly uh, respond to your questions or comments. And uh, again, you'll put some links to the uh, the, uh, the uh, album and things like that in the comments mm-hmm. as well. Uh, so yeah, with absolutely. that. With that, I'd like to thank you again for the time that you spent with us today. I'd like to thank our viewers for watching now and later. Uh, And uh, yeah, this video will be there, uh, I guess, as as long as uh, Facebook continues to exist and Facebook continues to uh, have us on there. We'll be on there, this video, for for you to watch later on. So again, thank you so much, Lara. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. And on that note, uh, our viewers, Take care, take good care of yourself, take good care of one another. And until we meet again, have a great day and the rest of your week. Thank you.